six o'clock and I'd like to call to order the 15th regular meeting of the 2020-21 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Your attitude towards problems, difficulties, and adversities is the most important factor in overcoming them. Thank you for those thoughts. Would the clerk please call the roll. Alderperson Bourne. Here. Alderperson Donahue. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. Alderperson Ackley. Here. Alderperson Phillips. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Sorensen. Here. Alderperson Savaglio. Present. Alderperson Felicki Paneski. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. There are 10 present. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, nation, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the approval of our minutes from our 14th regular council meeting, which was held on October 19th of 2020. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The next item is uh, public forum, city clerk. There is one person this evening. Gary Toffiner. Gary, please step up to this podium. Hi, Gary. Can you state your name and address for us, please? Okay, my name is Gary Toffiner. Address is 2606 Gray Fox Court in Sheboygan. I want to pull the mic down a little bit, Gary. There you go. And you'll have five minutes. Okay. Mayor of Andersteen and council members, as I mentioned, my name is Gary Telfiner. I spoke to you all several times at your council meetings last year to request funds from the city of Sheboygan to upgrade the optical cable from WSCH to City Hall and to Spectrum. This much needed upgrade was necessary so you could watch our local government and community channels on Spectrum Channel 990. This channel includes all of the local city government meetings, parades, and of course the Knights of Columbus, cable, television, rosary, and several local ch church services. The Rosary is aired on channel 997 days a week at 8.30 a.m., as well as other local church services during the week. Getting this new optical cable was very special to me. Not only did I fight for this project in memory of my mother, who watched the channel every morning for the Rosary, I did it for all of our local Catholics in the city of Sheboygan. As I mentioned last year, I watched it daily myself and a lot of parishioners in our churches have thanked me for standing up to get this project completed. I also want to mention that even though this project got completed now, they were working on this several months ago and the picture quality improved immediately. With people staying at home during this coronavirus, this improvement couldn't have taken place at a better time. So that the government meetings were in good quality broadcasts as well as other many programs this channel offers. This was money wisely spent and it ended up costing a third of the original projected cost. So I'm glad I pushed this and got it through. I will now read the email that I received from Scott Meliff, the program director from WSCH. He wrote to me, Mr. Taufner, 
It has been a long time coming, but I am pleased to be able to report to you that the fiber optical delivery to Spectrum is officially complete. I received confirmation from Spectrum's project manager this morning, October 20th. October 20th is recognized each year as Community Media Day, so it is somewhat fitting that this project was successfully completed today. I want to again express my sincere appreciation for your dedicated efforts and perseverance in making this project happen. I can confidently say that it would not have happened without you. Thanks for the many ways to thanks for the many ways you support community media. With deep gratitude, Scott. So in, in concluding, once again, Mayor Vandersteen and council members, thank you from the bottom of my heart for passing this much needed improvement for our local community channel and for making our city great once again. Thank you. Thank you for those comments and for, for making those observations for us in the beginning. Uh, next item is a presentation by the United Way of Sheboygan County. Uh, Kate Bear, the executive director, is with us virtually. I'll turn it over to Kate Bear for her presentation. Hello. Thank you for having me. You can hear me okay, correct? Yes, we can. Wonderful. And here it is, the presentation. Um, again, really excited to be here because not only can I share with you the amazing and important work United Way is doing, but obviously collectively as a nonprofit and social sector, this has been a struggle. Um, this addressing all the community needs and what we can do and what needs to be done. So the need, the need is great and, and we're here to respond. So we can move forward. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update on our COVID-19 response. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with it. So we raised and disseminated funds from March 2020 to July 2020. That fund has now closed, but we were able to raise and disseminate rapidly over $285,000. The funding, as you can kind of see laid out there, went to food and basic needs was our top um, area of need with over $100,000 being donated into that um, area in our community. And then it goes on from housing, education, housing and shelter, mental health, general resource needs, um, cleanliness products. There was over $22,000 that was utilized from different area nonprofits for cleanliness. Um, and the relief fund really did provide the immediate support the nonprofit, for the nonprofit sector while they met needs for um, various neighbors in need, clients, folks that they serve. Uh, we 54 grants were awarded, 31 local agencies, and it really then began, became an innovative partnership with the Sheboygan Service Club. So this was not just a United Way effort, this was the Sheboygan Service Club stepping up and wanting to raise funds and give back, as well as um, the United Way of Sheboygan County um, board members <coughs> combining to make this happen. So other responses we had, if you click forward, we had um, obviously a COVID-19 nonprofit response network. Um, 50 plus agencies have participated. We get anywhere from 20 to 50 agencies on a call. We have convened these conversations. It was around 15 <coughs> weeks straight. We were meeting weekly on Tuesdays. And more than just meeting, we were being good stewards of our donor dollars. We were trying to collaborate in ways that were maybe not thought of prior. Obviously, that's what a pandemic does. It really challenges us to think outside the box and what can we do as a community to come together. So some amazing um, outcomes occurred because of these conversations and because of working together. Uh, we had the uh, a general community resources page, which is still live, still active, and you can also get to it by SheboyganCountyStrong.com which was supported um, also by our corporate partners at Kohler. So this resource page was another way in which to share out information that the city was sharing, that schools were sharing. Um, two and one is another great resource. And then of course we were supporting our volunteer center network. Um, and then came civil unrest, right? And then DEI diversity, equity and inclusion became one of our needs to respond to also as a social sector. 
So um, United Way, along with a number of other social sector leaders, have formed a smaller committee working with the Sheboygan Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Initiative. And we are moving our way through that because of the utmost importance for how that impacts equity in our community. And what does that mean? Um, so again, speaking to the volunteer center, speaking to all the good that's happening, someone on the common council might say, well, why is this important right now? Um, obviously employers need to know this and hear this as well quality of life, talent acquisition, retention, bringing people into the county, into the city to stay, robust volunteerism and philanthropic giving is really critical to um, the way in which we present our community and live our lives. So always excited to share more information on that if anyone wants information there. Um, if we move on to the next slide, just a little overview quick of the campaign kickoff and day of caring. Uh, we really wanted to promote virtual volunteer opportunities for obvious reasons, um, safety and health and concerns. There are a number of volunteer opportunities that have continued through this pandemic that really are essential workers coming <coughs> together. Um, so we did have a number of in-person volunteer opportunities. We had an acts of <coughs> kindness challenge. Um, our newsletter just went out tonight. So if you're curious about watching any of the videos that occurred, any of our presentations I'll talk about, all of the links are there. It's all on our website. Um, and a great quote that was shared in our recent website from Abraham Joshua Henschel, um, an American Polish rabbi, once said, when I was young, I admired clever people. Now that I am old, I admire kind people. And so we really wanted to push kindness because we know we're very polarized as, you know, a nation, a community. How can we come together and how can we really unite? Because that's what United Way is here for. So we have been um, really trying to think outside the box to support our, our community on, the, on those levels. Um, we had donation drives that were hugely successful, not just through our community impact initiatives, but other agencies in the community that we helped support. Um, and again, all of this is important because we are facing really a mountain of what's coming in the next number of months, donor fatigue, how can we make sure our social sector remains, that the foundation remains strong to service and continue to support all the people we do collectively. So if we um, highlight the next slide, it, it really speaks to how we've also tried to incorporate community education. So I'm here just quickly to get have my 12 minutes to talk to you all about all the things happening. But again, a conversation on Alice was had. We have all that information. If you have more interest in learning more about that specifically, one, you can watch that event. We can present another time. Alice, again, is Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. It's an acronym that speaks to um, those that live above the federal poverty level but below the basic cost of living. So in our community in Sheboygan County, the latest data that just came out was from 2018. And what's a little frightening is that we know more individuals have fallen into poverty because of the pandemic and therefore um, fallen into the Alice level. So maybe current Alice families now would be considered poverty. Um, we're watching closely, obviously, the free and reduced lunch rates in our community and trying to really get a heartbeat for how this pandemic has impacted our, our those most vulnerable. Um, financially and, and health equity, racial equity, all of those things. So um, again, this report helps community members, donors, nonprofits, and businesses understand the population in Sheboygan County and what we can do for housing, what we can do um, for job security, how we can come and work together and really figure out what is living wages and how can we support our employers. And it's not of this and us, it's not political. It is really about just getting the information out there and, and making sure that you're all aware of there are plenty of programs that do respond and support Alice families as well. So all of that information in our latest newsletter on our website. Um, we also had a conversation on food stability. It continues to be of utmost concern. And we are so grateful to partner with and have amazing organizations like Sheboygan County Food Bank, Meals on Wheels. Um, Sheboygan Area School District also spoke at this um, panel on food stability. And so understanding, again, the needs for those basic needs and what that means to be hungry and how, how that on any given day, 11,000 people are struggling with food in, in Sheboygan. 
tell me that that we what we can do as a community to come together to address that so lots of issues to handle um and and lots of ways in which we are trying to get those words out and raise funds for that so if we move on um our community impact initiative just a quick overview so you understand some of the other work united ways doing cpc again stands for um sheboygan county Commu um community partnership for children so this is not just sheboygan county um, united way as an agency it is also the family resource center it is it is also the early learning center it, it is also um, family connections it's a number of early care and education agencies coming together it's a cradle to career initiative uh, what, uh, some of the programs they provide welcome baby visits so every first time mom in sheboygan county gets a visit at the hospital um, also the dads right but the moms are you know usually there and um, what that means is resource sharing understanding if they have other um, other areas of challenges that we could support as a community and how to direct families to those resources it's about investing early so we then can save funding further down the line whether that means in our judici judicial systems um, and where that uh, mental health funding, uh, all of those things, if we can invest early, it makes a difference. So they also do developmental screens, parent cafes. They have been working um, really throughout this entire pandemic, virtually pivoting like all of us. Uh, PATH is another community impact initiative, just a, a brief update for you all. That stands for providing access to healing. And what that is, is it is putting therapists in the school. So, um, licensed therapists will go to the school now some virtual right Schwingen area school district had to make that tough decision um but we've been able to do remote or telehealth therapy we served um last year in a given school week throughout Sheboygan county over 455 therapy sessions were occurring 455 in one week so all um county uh, all uh, public school districts in the county are involved in this we're hoping to expand it we need support to do this and again this is a very preventative thing we know we're all experiencing collective trauma right now as a community as a nation as a world that's what this pandemic really has shown us and um, addressing mental health needs more important than ever so total therapy sessions we were able to provide last year 22,295 um, so that's been quite incredible. Our partners there are Lakeshore Community Healthcare and also um, Ozaki Community Therapies. So again, working with all the schools. And then of course, I mentioned our volunteer center a little, trying to think outside the box and the importance of understanding how we can make that connection. So if we move along, just some quick brief outputs that um, team wanted to share. 14,000 youth participated in programs. This is last year. 589 parents received parenting education. We had over 1,000 welcome baby visits in person last year. We've just done 200 in the last couple months. And so then those have now gone virtual. So again, trying to pivot. Lots going on. Um, as you see, that there was 28,100 nights of shelter provided to our community. Collectively, 5,300 people received budget counseling. Um, a lot of important information happening in our community. And um, it's only because of this collective nature to come together. Um, our partner agencies this year are listed here. Obviously, I can get anyone this um, PowerPoint, or it would be a part of the minutes, I imagine, access to it for the Common Council tonight. But um, we have a number of partner agencies, and again, you know, when people ask, who are United Way's clients? What do we do? Well, not only do we have the direct service of PATH and the students in the mental health program, not only do we have the direct service of parents in CPC, Community Partnership for Children, but we also see our entire sector, our social <coughs> sector, and those nonprofits as our clients. How can we support them? So we list the partner agencies. They, they receive financial funding from a community action team that really objectively looks at um, financial requests and then we use community needs and there's a whole system there but further than that we've really reached out to all the nonprofits to kind of find that heartbeat for what's going on so then this last slide just wanted to speak to um, some of the needs we're still we're still seeing happening so obviously there's a ton of needs related to youth mentoring youth um, housing has been an issue 
highly mobile or just affordable housing continues to be an issue. I know the city's doing lots of things on that, so we're really grateful for that. Um, employment, you know, we're, right now we're working with consumer credit counselors who are trying to re invigorate the job seekers network that really started in 2008 when we were in the great recession and how can we engage those who need a job and all these great corporate partners who have jobs so what's happening where's the disconnect how can we reach out trying to convene those conversations push that forward um again food security and mental health i mentioned tonight also just domestic violence and safety huge concerns not everybody is safer at home when we're safer at home so some of the organizations we probably support are able to help address those um, those in need, in dire need, really, in this sort of situation. Um, not listed, but also I mentioned um, prior was DEI, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and just really equity. So United Way has been here. We've been here in this community because of people like you on the screen for 89 years, 90 years next year. And what we've been able to do in those 89 years is address equity. That is who we are, whether that be socioeconomic equity, health equity, racial equity, all of those inequities that individuals face. And how can we really come together to solve complex problems in our community? So it is bleak. It is. It's not hopeless, though. Um, there's certainly in our community our fears of donor fatigue occurring, loss of revenue from direct service in-person programming occurring amongst all our nonprofit friends and colleagues. Loss of fundraising, special event revenue. Um, we're again facing an incredible hill to climb up, but we are up for the challenge. I hope you are up to join us in any way you can in accepting and uh, jumping in for more education on how we can support our community, in donating if you can, in giving back time, talents, treasures, whatever that looks like to you. The sector needs it, we need it, and um, um, we're happy to have this little platform to share that message. So that was a lot. <laughs> um, as I say what I need to say in my 10 minutes, right? Really um, want to just share again that if there's any way in which you think you could utilize more information, um, have us help be that leader that we see it, that we are and have been for all of these years in this community, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. My information is all there. My team's information is all there. Um, there's a number of different resources. 211 is a great one. Um, just want to continue to say United Way is here. We're not going anywhere. We're here because of you. And, and the need is greater than ever. So anything the city can do um, in regards to supporting the sector, as I know you have with different unique funding opportunities, I think it's really relevant to consider the impact those will have, even though the time and energy to go through those routes, so. Kate, thank you so much for that great presentation on the activities in United Way, and we look forward to kicking off our campaign shortly within our employee group, so thank you very much. Yes, we're so grateful. <clears throat> Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. I'd like to start out with a proclamation and I'd like to call up uh, Kevin Greetens. Where is the Concordia Singers of Sheboygan was organized by 17 German immigrants living in Sheboygan in 1860. And whereas at that time, this choral society consisted of men only and practices were held in private homes. And whereas over the next 160 years, the Gisnaverin uh, changed multiple times from being a men's choir to mixed chorus and, and calling different locations in Sheboygan its home. And whereas today Concordia has a hall of its own on St. Clair Avenue and 9th Street, and the mixed choir consists of 45 active singers. And whereas thanks to the dedication and loyalty of its members, directors, the ethnic love of German word, and the songs that have been shared with uh, Sheboygan and surrounding communities for the past 160 years by member of the Concordia Singers of Sheboygan. Now therefore, I'm Mike Vanderstein, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, to hereby extend my personal congratulations to those of the entire City of Sheboygan to celebrate Concordia Singing Society's 160th anniversary and urge all of our residents to recognize this group which has done so much to share their love of the German word and song in our community. And I'd like to present to Kevin, the president of the Concordia Singers. 
Let's just step over here. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. Uh, my name's Kevin Graytons. I'm the current president of this excellent group of people. Uh, I'd like to introduce a few of the people that are here tonight. Our director here, Frederick Strasberger, um, does a wonderful job in leading us. Anna Shane and Henry. Anna is a soprano in our group and she's kind of our linguist to, to help us enunciate and pronounce the words correctly. Henry probably has one of the best jobs. He's in charge of our bartending for Gemutlichkeit. So uh, we do a number of, of, of concerts. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we had to cancel everything. We're a part of a national and a state organization. We have competitions. Everything's been canceled. Um, it's really, really kind of sad. This is actually the first time I've seen these people in months. But it's a great group of folks. We sing at nursing homes, at churches. We do concerts, uh, Welder House. Uh, and this year, we're going to not be able to do any of it. But we do have a website. And we did a virtual choir get together. And Herr Strasberger, with his creative genius, put all of these voices together. And it's really pretty good. So if you have a chance, you want to hear it, please join us. And he told me tonight we're going, going to do another one. But thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. A wonderful, wonderful thing to celebrate. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Tonight, I'd like to uh, give a brief COVID update. First of all, let's review the numbers. Uh, today, we had 5,361 positive tests for COVID. That's up 771 from last week. That's up 17%. We had 1,857 active cases. That's up 393 from last week. We have uh, 2,617 individuals overall that have recovered. And we currently have 37 uh, individuals in hospital as patients. That's up 14 uh, from uh, last week. And then, unfortunately, we saw more deaths this week. We had 31 total deaths. That's up from 24. That's up uh, seven, rather 30% uh, just in one week. The negative test total is 30,715. And that's up from 1,099 from last week. The Wisconsin National Guard testing site uh, last week completed 279 tests on Wednesday and 223 tests on Friday. Sheboygan County will continue to have community testing through the Wisconsin National Guard on Wednesdays and Fridays at the Sheboygan County Aging and Disability Resource Center in Sheboygan Falls through December 9th. There will be no testing, however, on Wednesday, November 11th for Veterans Day and Friday, November 27th for Thanksgiving holiday. If you are referring someone to this site, please ask them to pre-register at a website called register.covidconnect.wi.gov. Uh, the traffic uh, at that site usually slows down substantially beginning at noon, and the uh, wing comes prepared with 450 tests each time. Healthcare systems update, Aurora has the highest census since March 16th. Uh, their bed unit is filled and a secondary unit has a handful of patients. And also the other challenge that our hospitals are having is their staff is uh, getting sick from COVID and is sitting out. And they currently have 33 team members that are out uh, on, on, uh, on qual um, quarantine. Visitor restrictions still are in place and uh, they continue to pre-test uh, elective procedures. At St. Nicholas Hospital, they've seen the highest number of cases as well. It's putting stress on their ICU. They're managing, but it's definitely hour by hour. And they, again, are also doing elective cases with pre-screening. 
Sheboygan activity level is very high. It's strongly recommended uh, community actions are to avoid going places where safety measures are not in place, to wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, to always wear a mask in public, to disinfect frequently and use items and surfaces as much as possible. And if you're sick, stay home, do not go to work, school, or any other public place, and follow the advice of your medical provider. Then we'll go on to talk a little bit about the election tomorrow. The city clerk's office has had 1, 000, or the 13,600 voters request absentee ballots. 4,471 of those absentees were done in person in City Hall in the last few weeks. And 8,230 ballots are returned via a drop box or in the mail. There are about 900 absentee ballots to still be returned. These absentee ballots can be dropped off at City Hall until 4.30 tomorrow. The Mead Public Library drive through will be open till 6 o'clock, so 6 o'clock will be the last uh, check there. And uh, you can also bring it to your election poll until 8 o'clock. We currently have uh, 25,800 voters that are registered for the election. In a normal election, sees about 21,000 voters turn out. Tomorrow on Tuesday, November 3rd, the polling locations for the general election are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have one change that happened fairly late, but wards 15, 20, and 21, the poll changed to 604 North A Street, the former Wisconsin Bank and Trust building right next to City Hall here on A Street. All registered voters of those wards were mailed postcards to notify them of this change. For the protection of other voters and city poll workers and staff, all voters, please wear a mask when you enter the building. Uh, when you're at your polling location, please observe social distance of six feet between other voters. And remember, you need a, vo a, vo a photo ID in, in order to vote. I'll bring this up a little later, but uh, you should have all received an email with my budget memo. Uh, we commend the uh, city administrator and his budget team on the budget that's before us tonight, and I'll read that a little later. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items uh, 2.2 through 2.21. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items on the consent agenda? Mayor, this is Alderman Bourne. I have a question on, on item number 2.20. Uh, please go ahead. And this is all the we'll get to you next, Roberta. Jim, what's your question? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I have a couple of questions for uh, Director Beeble if he's if he's there tonight. Uh, first of all, Director Beeble, I'm glad to see that this project is getting off the ground in my <clears throat> District 10 on South Business Drive. Uh, a couple of questions that I have with the work that's been that is going to be done on the property by Wonder Construction with the grading and related work. Is that going to also include some uh, stormwater work while they're doing the grading? And then my other question is, what can we expect further after the grading in 2021? And how is the organization doing with its fundraising? And have you gotten to the point yet where you've uh, contacted any of the financial institution for some funds that you may need after the donations come in. Well, we'll turn it over to uh, Public Works Director David Beeble. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'll try to answer the, a couple of those. I might uh, turn it over also to the city engineer, Ryan Sasma, who's in the audience. Uh, I know there's representatives of the Boots and Sports Complex at attendance tonight, and they can maybe uh, address the fundraising aspect of it. This first phase, as, as you know, is, is kind of initial kickoff phase, and it's mainly just grading. It's, it's taking the existing farmland and reshaping it, regrading it to accommodate athletic fields. Um, primarily just they're all gonna be in grass uh, at the beginning. So it's gonna take some time. 
uh, to develop and grow the grass to get it to a point where these fields would, would be actually usable, in other words. So in, in a sense, there isn't going to be any stormwater necessary in this first phase because all it is is um, grass and vegetation. So in, in other words, there's no hard surfaces. Now, next, next spring or next year in 2021, we are looking at some of the actual, what I would say, some of the site where clearing some of the old buildings, uh, improving some parking at the facility. In that phase, I would anticipate we will have some stormwater retention as well. Uh, we do have uh, two ponds in the ultimate plan that would be built when it's fully um, operational and fully built out. That is obviously dependent upon fundraising and, and when, that, when that project would get going to that phase. Great. However, um, one of the, the, the pond that what I would say is on the south, south, southerly portion of the property, there's a potential there that that could also serve more in a regional capacity that uh, because it has some uh, headwaters that do flow into the Fisherman's Creek area as well from some of our business center to the west of this area. So there are opportunities and those will all be explored as the plans get further along and further developed. Um, I'm just trying to think. Yeah. Again, this, this first phase, it has uh, four, four large-scale adult-sized <clears throat> soccer fields or high school-age soccer fields, as well as four uh, smaller youth-sized fields. Uh, and again, it's mainly just going to be developed in, in grass and regrading and shaping so that they're playable in that, in that capacity, uh, so that they're flat and... Um, able to be developed. We're, lo we're looking at probably, uh, if it starts this winter, as the contractor met with us today, their schedule is to start next week and work through, almost through Christmas time. And they figure they should, weather dependent, they should have everything ready to go. Um, hopefully maybe even get it seeded this, this winter for a dormant seed that it could take off right away in spring. If not, the contract does allow for work to occur next year in 2021 for the spring season uh, for growing. In other words, uh, the contractor is very excited. Um, as you mentioned, as we looked at the documents, there was nine contractors on this project. That, that's a, that's at a large, large amount of contractors of interest that bid on a, on a project. So, and we got very, very good uh, pricing because of the competitiveness of this contract. Um, uh, I hope that answers most of your questions. Uh, please interject. I just had one, one follow-up, David. I know as soon as my constituents over in the, in the Indian Meadows trailer court see the, the equipment there starting to do the uh, grading, uh, my follow-up question is, with your stormwater plan for the development uh, and that trailer court being a, a neighbor, is there anything that is going to complicate things with the trailer court as far as as far as their stormwater, or is that in the plans to take care of any potential problems with that? Yeah, at, at this point, any of the stormwater remains on the Butson site and does not impact the, what I would say, the Indian Meadows mobile home uh, park to the north of there. So it stays all within the Butson property and, and heads easterly. There may be some need, uh, there's, a, there's a, a culvert that was installed uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, as a crossing that may or may not uh, be enlarged, in other words, to, and it's all depending, again, upon ultimate development. And at that stage, when we get a little bit further along, uh, that will be investigated and researched as well. But at this point, there should be no um, water that leaves the site. It's, it, it's all within the proper um, current, current drainage, uh, natural drainage areas that exist today. <clears throat> Thank you for that question. Uh, next, Alder Person, Feliki Paneski, you had a question? Thank you, very, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a question on 2.2 and 2.3. 2.2 is um, a $2.4 million uh, assessment that is returned to Lakeshore Technical College. Two point three is a $2.2 million assessment 
that is returned to the Kohler schools, um, we collect, do, do we collect those on behalf of those institutions? Does it show up in our budget line? Does it show up on the tax bill? And where does the money go? How does it move? To respond to that, the, um, the question of both uh, Lakeshore Technical College and the Kohler School District, those entities are, uh, are, are collecting property tax to support their organizations. And as such, they have to inform all the municipalities uh, that are in their districts of that action. So with Lakeshore Technical College, that includes uh, Manitowoc County, Sheboygan County, and Calumet County. And so all the municipalities in those three counties will get the same notice. And in the uh, Kohler School District case, I, I think it would only be um, the city, the town of Wilson, of course, the village of Kohler. And uh, I know there might be some other areas that I'm missing, uh, but uh, th those are just giving notices to those municipalities. And the uh, tax bill does uh, show all of those uh, tax levies when you get your bill in the mail. And all these monies are paid to the, the county. And then the county, after all the collections are done, will disperse it to all the, uh, the taxing entities that uh, uh, were collected for. Does that answer your question? Okay, so the city is not responsible for those entities' levies. We are just responsible for our levy, even though those two entities show up on our tax bill. That's correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other? Mayor, I had a couple of questions. I had a couple of questions, Mayor, uh, for the attorney that's there representing the uh, the soccer organization. And if I could ask him a couple of questions, if he's available. Sure, Joe. Would you please step up to the podium? Go ahead, Alderperson Boring. Thank you. Uh, Joe, good to see you. Uh, Thank Joe, you. Joe, if you could just give the uh, council somewhat of an update on your fundraising efforts so far and uh, with donations, and then also are you to the point in the process where you're going to be approaching any financial institutions and then finally, do you think it would be possible as you go along with more specific plans on what you're going to be doing and seeing there's probably going to be some more city funds involved with this project? Could you come back and give us a report like you did a year or so ago? Uh, thank you, Alderman Board. Good to see you as well. Thank you. Um, with respect to, I'll try to uh, address each one in a separate kind of point by point basis. Uh, with respect to our, our current fundraising, um, obviously, COVID has created some difficulties with fundraising and approaching other financial institutions uh, uh, with regard to asking for funds. Now, obviously, where we're at in the process now is with phase, what's affectionately called phase zero, uh, as our introductory phase. Uh, the city funds are being utilized, and as, as David Beeble had indicated, we got a very favorable uh, uh, return on all the bids we got, which will allow us some additional funds by which to work with some of the things he referenced, like uh, building removal, demolition, and, and some of those others. So uh, uh, to, to piggyback on that, I don't know that there's going to be an immediate need uh, for any additional city funding at this point, as I, I think we do have a surplus uh, in the original amount that was uh, earmarked. With regard to uh, approaching banks, credit unions, financial institutions, and so forth, I think that is part of a larger plan, uh, Alderman, uh, at this point, uh, have we had any specific uh, uh, discussions above 50, you know, below 50,000 feet? Not really uh, at this point. Is that part of our intention? Yes. Uh, we have hired or are looking and are talking to a uh, fundraising uh, consultant with respect to moving forward. Phases one and two um, uh, are likely coming down the pike after we get through phase zero uh, and get some visibility. I think, uh, Alderman, to... to get a shovel in the ground at this point uh, is really a, a critical component to going forward uh, with banks and credit unions and financial institutions uh, simply because uh, it's no longer discussion. It's no longer a presentation. It's, it's reality. There's a shovel in the ground. There's going to be kids playing. There's going to be grass. There's going to be a facility out there for everyone to see. 
Uh, we think that's really important in moving that forward on a, on a fundraising effort, uh, particularly with regard to local institutions. We think it'll give us a lot of solid visibility there. And, and lastly, you asked if we would be uh, able to come back. We are available at any point in time to come back and discuss not only where we are in phase zero and fundraising and other questions, uh, but also to talk in more detail about the developments uh, where we are in those processes. We're always glad to talk to anybody at any time. So all, all we would need is just an invite. We'd be glad to come down. Thanks for the information, Joe. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or discussion relating to the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to reports of officers, item 3.1 is RO number 92 of 2021 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Gary Toffiner regarding the upgrade to the fiber optic cable. Alderperson Boring. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, make a motion to uh, receive and file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.2 is RO number 93 of 2021 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting the 2021 Business Improvement District bid statement of purpose dated October 1st of 2020 and the bid's uh, 2021 operating budget. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file the um, RO. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please, no, we can do a voice vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 3.3 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 4.1 will lay over, and items 4.2 and 4.3 will be again referred to uh, various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 183 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 114 of 2021 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, authorizing the sale of 1402 Union Avenue to, uh, in the city of Sheboygan and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. I move approval of the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under general ordinances, item 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to the City Plan Commission. Under matters laid over, item 7.1 is RC number 167 of 2021 by the Committee of the Whole, to whom is referred RO number 82 of 2021 by the Finance Director submitting the 2021 budget adjustments related to resolution number 103 of 2021 by all the persons Donahue and Sorensen establishing the 2021 budget appropriations and the 2020 tax levy for use during the calendar year. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to file um, 7.1, 7.3, and 7.4, and I move to approve the uh, I move to pass 7.2 with the approved amendments. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, that motion is before us for further discussion. Mayor. 
Go ahead, Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you. I just wanted to, to commend um, uh, City Administrator Todd Wolf on uh, his first budget that he's presented and worked on um, with, with the, the City of Sheboygan as well in under about three and a half months on this. Definitely did not come at an easy time. Um, city budgets are, are not an easy task at hand as well, too. Um, but we have a great um, staff of department heads and appreciate all their support and time and effort that they put into this as well. Um, so I'll be voting in favor of this. Um, I know that um, we got a lot of challenges ahead, but I'm very confident in the leadership that we have um, with uh, City Administrator Todd Wolf at the helm with, with um, our city finances. So just wanted to say thank you. Is there any other discussion? Well, I'd like to take the opportunity to read the budget memo that I mailed out to you earlier today. I commend City Administrator Todd Wolf, Finance Director Marty Halverson, and Assistant to the City Administrator Carrie Arentz, our department heads and managers for the fine work involved to develop the City of Sheboygan's 2021 budget. It was a privilege to work with this group to meet the goals that were set by the Common Council. This year, Administrator Wolf and the budget team had to deal with the possibility of future additional costs due to the coronavirus and, and, that, and that city operations may have to absorb a continuing loss of revenues due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2021 budget also had to absorb the loss of $500,000 in utility aid payments due to the closing of two turbines at the Alliant Energy Generating Station. This budget maintains important city services that our residents have depended on in the past. And the 2021 budget contains a larger contingency to be able to deal with the impacts of the coronavirus. The budget also allows the city of Sheboygan to continue to qualify for the Wisconsin State Expenditure Restraint Program. And the budget calls for a total tax levy increase of $900,028,968 that will result in a property tax increase of 1.49% or a levy of 15 cents per thousand of assessed value. 2021 budget is consistent with the six, four, six focus areas of the City of Sheboygan strategic plan for 2017 through 2021 and establishes an operational and financial plan for the delivery of city services, implementation of the city's capital improvements program. The city's 2020 Double A two bond rating by Moody's is further evidence of its financial strength and the strong rating translates directly into lower interest rates on the city's borrowings. This budget lays out the purpose, organization and staffing and workload, workload measurements and a description for each city department. It also includes uh, department budget highlights, goals and objectives. The executive budget establishes an operational and financial plan for the delivery of city services. This budget seeks to balance the needs for community services with the goal to maintain financial stability. As mayor, I recognize the excellent work that has gone into this document that will direct the operation of our city in 2021, and I support the budget and ask for your approval tonight on the budget on the council floor. One last call for any other discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Todd. Other matters authorized by law, I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. That'll be referred to Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. Seeing that we have exhausted the agenda, um, I move to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. <laughs>